gather on this holy night to celebrate the great mystery of our faith. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it Hurriedly, it is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray responsively the verses of Psalm 116 found in the bulletin. Let us pray. I love the Lord who has heard my voice. And listened to my supplication. For the Lord has given ear to me. Whenever I call. How shall I repay the Lord? For all the good things God has done for me. I will lift the cup of salvation. And call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord. Precious in your sight, O Lord, is the death of your servants. O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving. And call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord. In the courts of the Lord's house. In the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Hallelujah. 
Amen. A reading from 1 Corinthians. St. Paul writes, For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 13th chapter. Glory and praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord. You are right. For that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. 
And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Glory, Glory and praise to you, O Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. You may be seated. Listen and hear, look and see, taste, smell, and touch every sense matters tonight, as do our memories. Tonight we remember. My childhood home was near the Cloverleaf in Westmoreland County where Route 22 crosses over Route 66. On summer nights as a boy, through my bedroom window, I could hear the trucks, 18-wheelers, ascend the hill on Route 22, shift gears, regain their speed, and then rattle after hitting the uneven pavement of the bridge at the Cloverleaf. I imagined where they'd come from, where they were going, one after another, all through the night. This ritual, hearing the engines, tires, shifting gears, rattling cargo at the bridge abutment, strangely, it was a comfort, a means to think about the direction of my life. Now at 62, here in Mount Lebanon, at night, I listen for the trains passing through Heidelberg and Bridgeville. But sometimes it's hearing the cycles of our house furnace on cold nights that stir my memory of the trucks on the highway. Listen and hear. Look and see, taste, smell, touch. Every sense matters on Holy Thursday. <clears throat> What's happened, of course, <clears throat> is that many have lost the sense of mystery regarding the bread and wine. Contained in the repeated words, in our ritual of eating and drinking again and again. Many no longer believe Jesus, that he is present, truly with, under, and among us in the bread and wine. The power of the symbol is now lost to generations of postmoderns, and they flounder to find a wider meaning of what they do, why they're here, why they were born. New money techies, crypto traders, they're buying the world, purchasing, growing wealth the size of which the world has never seen. But they rarely worship, give dismally to charity, if at all. The church is largely rejected. The under 30 crowd is chasing other things, inventing new rituals, but there's no substitute for the bread and wine. There is nothing better, more needed than Jesus. Jesus for us in bread and wine. Tonight we remember his last meal on earth during which he created 
the ritual for us to repeat again and again every time we meet. A simple thing, really, bread and wine. But nonetheless, the majesty of God for our lives, the forgiveness of our sins, the promise of heaven. St. Paul's words in the second reading. I've heard them over and again throughout my life, like the trucks, trains, and the cycles of the furnace in the night. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Listen and hear, look, see, taste, smell, touch. Every sense is needed. We need memory, too. We need to tell our children and grandchildren what it was like when we were young, when the symbol of bread and wine was still alive. We need to remember that the symbols of bread and wine were once alive for many. They were believed. There was something more to life than piling up dough, raising high achievers for a, another spin on the wheels of capitalism. Jesus is with us in bread and wine. He comes for us, always present to create and renew faith, to form us into who we are to be in the light of God's love. Though Judas betrayed him, and we continually betray him, Jesus keeps coming for us in bread and wine to give us his life, the way to life, the way to heaven. He's the gift that keeps us going in the watches of the night from childhood until our final breath. He's God's gift, repeatedly given his last supper, we treasure tonight. We remember with all of our senses, and we believe by faith in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
please stand? Let us pray. O oh God, you make a new covenant with your people. Gather your church around word and table in love and promise as these three holy days enfold us. Open us to behold the mystery of our salvation. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. You give us our daily bread, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. Bless those who labor and tend to their crops and those who prepare our meals. Strengthen us to advocate for food, justice, and a fair distribution of food and resources. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You, our Savior and teacher, stoop down to us in servant love. Inspire national and local leaders with a renewed sense of public service, what it means to stoop down. Deliver us from the false leadership that has been afflicting the world. Increase in leaders the sense of humility in Christ so that they would serve with equity and fairness. Teach us to pray for our enemies. We pray for our enemies, the governments of China, the governments of Russia, all of the enemies in the world turning against us. We pray for our friends. We pray for those suffering the most. We pray for refugees and migrants seeking only a better life for themselves. We pray for the people of Ukraine. We pray for all victims of violence. We pray for the lonely, those at the margins of life. Those the church is still turning away in some places, in some corners of the church. Deliver us from the narrowness of spirit that wants to drive people away. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You incline your ear to us in every need. Comfort those who are grieving. Soothe any who are anxious. Console those who are distressed. Those anticipating job loss in the approaching recession. Graciously tend to the hurts of your children in any place, suffering in body, mind, and spirit. Comfort those estranged from their families. Bless all the ones on our prayer ministry list. We pray for Martha Hudak also and all those recovering from surgeries or illness, merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Inspire us to praise you in word, song, and art. We give thanks for artists, for those who lead church worship, whose gifts are to enrich us through song. We praise you for the glamour and the excitement of the theater for how love and truth are communicated through the guilds of actors throughout the world. Kindle in us an appreciation for all who beautify the world through the arts, especially those who turn their gifts for the use of worship throughout all the changing seasons of life. Merciful God, receive our prayer. 
Precious in your sight is the death of your faithful ones. We remember and give thanks for those who have died, especially our loved ones dear to our hearts, especially those who have died at the hands of others. With all the saints, we trust your promise that your love will carry us until the end unto everlasting life. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, trusting in your steadfast love and in your promise to renew your whole creation. We thank you, Lord, for every new birth. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share in the peace of Christ. Peace be with you.
Let us pray. God of glory, as Jesus was lifted up from the earth, draw us to your heart in the midst of this world, that all creation may be brought from bondage to freedom, from darkness to light, and from death to life, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all time and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ whose suffering and death gave salvation to all. You gather your people around the tree of the cross, transforming death into life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, here is bread. Here is wine, here is Jesus, the light of the world. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have set before us the feast of the body and blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Please kneel or be seated. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. in the Lord, let the Lord deliver. Let God rest from sin, if God shows his righteousness. Yet you are the one who drew me forth from the womb. And kept me safe on my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near. And there is no one to help. Many young bulls encircle me. strength is dried up like a potsherd. My tongue sticks to the root of my mouth. And you will bring me to the dust of death. Packs of dogs close me in. A band of evildoers circles around me. I can count all my bones. You are the everlasting and close. They divide my garments among them. For my clothing they have brought. But you, O oh Lord, be not far away. me from the sword. My eyes are covered of the blood. Save me from the lion's mouth. From the wants of one whom you have 
declare your name to my people. Jacob's line give glory. For the Lord does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty, neither is the Lord's face hidden from them. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Let those who seek the Lord give praise. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship. Descendants shall serve the Lord. They shall proclaim to generations to come. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn. 